This is a video tutorial of my book, Muslim Child. Um, I wrote this book basically to answer a lot of questions that people might have, but would be too polite to ask. And I thought I would, um, I would give an overview of Islam. And that's what I try to do with this book. This is not a proselytizing book. It's not a preachy book. It's more of an information book. And I'm kind of pleased with the way that it, it's it's done so well. Uh, it's done very, very well. In fact, School Library Journal, it, they called it up like a primer on Islam. And and what I the way I, I set the book up, what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of have an overview of Islam. So the Islam is basically based on five pillars. Like if, if a building has five like pillars to hold it up, there's five pillars that hold up Islam. And the five pillars are, the first is belief. Uh, the second is the prayer. We pray five times a day. And the third is fasting. The fourth is zakat or charity. And the fifth is the pilgrimage to Mecca. Like in your lifetime, you, you got to go one time. So what I did was I didn't write a story about the belief. You know, I mean, the, the belief, iman, like it's it's like with the shahada. Uh, the shahada is like the creed um, where you, you say that you believe that there's only one God. And, and that Muhammad is the last messenger of God. Now, I didn't include that because I thought, you know, that that's too preachy. Without, it's going to be in all of this. It's going to be in all of the stories. It's going to be present in all of the stories. But I didn't want to write a story about that. I thought it'd be too preachy and too didactic. I wanted to stay with the the more informational aspects of the stories. And the second story in the the second pillar, I focused that one for the first um, story in the book. It's called it's and, and it's on prayer. Now we pray five times a day. And the way I got the idea for this story, it's called Fudger. And the way I got the idea for the story is that at the time, I was just dreaming of being an author. And my husband, he was on like a community with our local masjid. And masjid's like our church. And they would put out a community newsletter out into the community. And he asked me to write for this newsletter. He said, Roxana, you write. Why don't you write the women's page? And I thought, the women's page? House cleaning tips and recipes? I thought, no, thank you. I said, give me the give me the children's page. I'll write some stories. And now the thing is, uh, the rule for writing is write what you know. And up till that point, I'd been writing stories about like normal kids, like Bobby and Sally and Joe and a worm called Waldo and all that kind of stuff. But here I, I've actually had got an idea to write a story from my culture. Uh, and from my my religious background, I got an idea because because we pray five times a day, and the first prayer of the day is always the hardest. It's called Fajr, and we have to pray Fajr before the sun rises at during dawn. Okay, like from dawn till the sun rises, that's the time for Fajr. And in northern climes, I mean, this morning in the summertime, that's really winter time's not a problem. You can even pray like seven thirty, quarter to eight, and you will still catch Fajr because the sun rises later. But in the summertime, the sun rises really early. Like this morning, I prayed Fajr at about 5 after 4, in the 4 a.m. You know, that's how early I, I prayed. And before we pray, we have to wash a lot. It's like an ablution. We have to wash, uh, first we wash our hands three times, then our mouth three times, then our nose three times, then our face three times, then our right arm to the elbow three times, and our left arm to the elbow three times. Then we wet our hair, we clean our ears, and we wash our right foot to the ankle three times, and our left foot to the ankle three times. And we do this before we pray. And if you fart or go to the bathroom, you got to go back and wash again. So I got an idea. I thought, what if I write a story about this boy who's getting up for Fajr prayer and he's grumbling, grumbling, and he thinks, oh man, it would be easier not to be Muslim. And his sister goes, oh, I'm telling you, you don't want to be Muslim. And he goes, no, 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 I just said it would be easier because then I wouldn't have to pray Fajr and everything. And his sister goes, don't you know that God doesn't need your prayer? You need your prayer. And he goes, yeah, yeah, no, leave me alone. So he goes to the washroom. And he looks at the toilet and he thinks, nah, it's going to take too long. So he just wants to pray and get back to bed. So he, he makes wudu and he starts to pray. And he prays the first part of the prayer, no problem. It's called sunnah. He prays it, no problem. It takes about two minutes. And then he has to pray the most important part of the prayer, the obligatory part. It's called the fart. And he's in the middle of his fart. He's got a big problem. He's got to fart. But he doesn't want to go back and wash again. So he just squeezes and hopes nothing slips out. And he starts praying really fast. The words are like a blur on his tongue. He's going, and then he goes down for ruku, like which is like the bowing. And 
it's harder to squeeze. And he stands up and then he goes down for surgery. He's on his, on his hands and his knees. His face is touching the floor and he's prostrating to God and he's swaying side to side trying to contain himself and he sits up and he goes back down and he sits up and he's almost done. He just has a few more words to say when it happens. <laughs> no more need to squeeze. No more need to rush. His prayer is ruined. But it was so tiny. Maybe it didn't count. So he goes ahead and he finishes his prayer like nothing happened. And his sister's looking at him like this. And he goes, what? What? And she goes, oh, you're so gross. I heard you. Go back and make Widu and pray again. And he goes, oh, man. So he goes to the washroom and he turns on the taps. And he says, well, forget it. I prayed already. Too bad if it's not perfect. It's good enough. I'm not going to go to hell just because of one prayer. So he shuts off the taps. And he goes and he listens at his sister's door and he hears that she's snoring. She's fast asleep. So he thinks, okay, I'm going to go back to bed. So he goes back to his nice, warm, cozy bed and he lies down. And then his back starts to itch, so he starts scratching his back. And then his foot starts to itch, so he starts scratching his foot. And then he looks over at the clock and by this time, 15 minutes have gone by. It would have taken him two minutes to go back and pray again. He thinks, no, forget it, I'm not going to do that. So he, he, he lies, he, he flops over and he starts thunking his foot. One, two, three, four. He gets all the way up to 378 and he still hasn't fallen asleep yet. And he looks at the clock and another 15 minutes have gone by. He thinks, no, no, forget it, I'm not going to pray again. No, 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 I'm not going to pray again. So he, he lies straight and he, he screws his eyes tight shut and he goes, okay, sleep, sleep, sleep. And right about then, he hears a sound. He's been hearing it for some time, but he didn't know this. And he thinks, what is that sound? Oh, it's the bird singing. Every stupid bird in the neighborhood is singing. His father would say that they're praying fudger in their own way. And he looks at the clock, and by this time, a whole hour has gone by. And he thinks, oh, well, forget about it. I'm not going to be able to sleep. I might as well go back and pray again. So he makes a fresh widoni, he prays again, and this time he takes his time. He says the words like he really means them. And when he's done, instead of going right back to bed, he starts doing his thicker, his praise of God. He's saying, God is great, God is great, God is great. And he looks out the window, and the sun's just starting to rise. The sky is all pink and rosy. The grass is sparkling with dew. It looks really pretty. So he grabs a book, and he grabs a blanket, and he goes out onto the porch to watch the sun rise. That's where his father finds him. Two hours later, he's fast asleep with the Quran, which is our holy book, in his hands. Now, it's actually a story about spiritual awakening, even though it has a fart in it. And it, here's the picture of the boy who is fast asleep. There he is, fast asleep. His name is Jamali, and he's fast asleep. He, it's such a cute picture. So that story, I ended up writing it and it went out into the the newsletter and the reaction from the community was amazing the imam of the masjid this big strong guy he came up to me and he said oh Roxana, Roxana, that was such a funny story i know just what it feels like to try not to fart when i'm praying so it was very very universal and the thing is in terms of using this book in the classroom i mean a lot of teachers might be hesitant they might think that oh you know they might get some flack from some of the parents but this is not a proselytizing book. This is really a, 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 a set of stories about kids from a different culture. And I tried to show aspects of the religion, but they're really actually good stories on their own. And this teacher that I met in Singapore, she was t she told me that it, she had actually uh, worked in Saudi Arabia for 28 years at an American school there. And she was a teacher librarian for 28 years. She was there. She didn't know anything about Islam. She found Muslim Child. It was the first book of mine she was introduced to. And she absolutely loved it. And the way she used it in her classroom, what she would do is she would share the stories with the students and then talk about how universal feelings were in the stories like how everybody knows what it feels like to try not to fart when they're praying and she would do the like the Hajj stories the, the one of the last stories and that one's about a boy who is lost at Hajj and Hajj five million people from around the world come to Hajj like for the pilgrimage that's the worst place in the world to get lost okay it's like the worst place in the world to get lost so, so she talked about how uh, a person would feel how that feeling of being lost is a universal feeling. This is the story of Lost at Hedge. So that's how she used it in the classroom. 
Now, one of the stories is called Jumbo Jelly Shoes, and that deals with the halal and the haram, like the whole um, thing, the idea that certain foods we're not allowed to eat. And the second story in there is called The Black Ghost, and that one deals with the, the dress, and it's actually based on an incident that happened with my older sister in Ottawa. Like when my nephew was only about four years old, she went to pick him up from daycare one day, and all the little kids came running in from outside yelling, a black ghost is coming, a black ghost is coming, hide, hide. And my sister thought, what is this black ghost they're talking about? And she went out to see and it turned out to be a Muslim lady wearing like a black scarf and a black jilbab, like a dress. And she had her face covered like that. And the little kids, they thought she was a black ghost. And when I heard that, I started laughing and I thought, but then I thought about it and I thought, no, but actually we would be scary. The way we dress would be scary to other people. So I wrote a story about a, a kid whose mother dresses that way. And then there's a story about a girl who's fasting for the first time. And then a story about Eid. And then another story about... Um, about uh, I wanted to introduce the, the historical aspect about the prophet being... Uh, from his from his history and that story is called the year of the elephant and it's about the the time that he was born and then i have another story uh about uh eid and and it would in terms of also using the book you could also use the 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 the, the festival stories because i know a lot of the curriculum a lot of the schools are using that, that there's certain times of the year that they're sharing ideas about other festivals and the story about eid uh the Eid, the Eid story, it's called I Love Eid. There's that story. And then there's also the story of the pil pilgrimage, the Lost at Hajj. So those are the two major festivals in Islam. There's only two of them. And, well, there's other festivals, but those are the really major ones that everybody celebrates. And then there's also a Ramadan story, the one about the girl's first fast. It's called Aziz's first fast. But my favorite story is actually the one called Samosas, and that one's about charity. I mean, I can't read that story without crying. So this is basically a story that you can use in your classroom. I hope you will also check out the teacher guide. I worked pretty hard on it in terms of making it as accessible to teachers and as useful as I could imagine. Uh, and it, a lot of teachers have given me some very good feedback on it. I will also include, uh, I hope you will also check out the other tutorials and the other resources that I will include in the links for this video. Thank you for watching.